Good evening, everyone. I'm Megan Wilson, the chair of the United States Masters Swimming History and Archives Committee. I consider it an honor to be here tonight to present to you the history of master swimming. Captain Ransom J. Arthur is credited for starting master swimming in the United States, but many others helped to advance the sport. Two of those people are here tonight to tell us their story. Robert Beach helped to establish and promote master swimming and received the United States Master Swimming Most Prestigious Award, the Captain Ransom J. Arthur Award in 1986. Bob Be Beach continues to compete today and he is a 48-time All-American. John Spanath ran the first Masters Nationals in Amarillo, Texas in 1970 and was instrumental in convincing the AAU to accept master swimming. He received the Ransom Arthur Award in 1988. He has been a leader in almost every field of aquatics and is currently the president of United States Water Fitness Incorporated. I would like to give a special thanks to the following people. To Barbara Dunbar, Vice Chair of the History and Archives Committee, who could not be here tonight. To, the, um, to Nadine Day, the President of United States Masters, to Ed Suzuki, the Vice, Pres the Pro Vice President of Local Operations, and to Rob Butcher, USMS Executive, Sec Executive Director, <laughs> for all their help. Thanks to you, Bob and John. I will now turn it over to John Spanner. to be here tonight and to share with you some of the past history of master swimming. A lot of people wonder how this program got going. When I was president of the American Swimming Coaches Association, I was trying to get more committees organized and rolling, and a doctor from California wrote in and said that he thought we should have a committee for swimming for older ages. And I said, tell me more, write something about it, and he did. And he wrote something, and I thought it was great. And then I said, we need something more. And so he published this item that told about why older individuals should swim and be concerned about their physical fitness. And there were three different organizations that sponsored this. One was the American Swimming Coaches Association, the other was uh, Ransom Arthur's organization that he worked for, the Navy Medical Neuropsychiatric Research Unit, located in San Diego. And the other was an organization that's run by Bruce Hopping. So this thing was printed, and Ransom asked me, well, how many of these do you want? And I said, 2,000. He said, what? I said, 2,000? He said, what are you going to do with those? I said, I'm going to distribute those all over the country. Well, some of these were sent to areas in Florida. One of them was sent to St. Petersburg to a pool there. And the pool manager had a guy that was swimming back and forth and said, hey, you need to read this. And that guy was a guy named Judge Bob Beach, who is still swimming. And I'll talk to, about him in just a minute. The first national A, the first national, I'm sorry, first national masters swimming meet was held in Amarillo, Texas in 1970. And it was a big job to get it going, but it was fun organizing it and keeping people happy. Then there was the effort to try to get the AAU to accept master swimming. And AAU, you probably know, stands for Amateur <coughs> Athletic Union. So I was a National Aquatics Administrator for the AAU and I was pushing this master's program and my boss called me in. His name was Harry Hainsworth. He was the only person that had the position that I was in during the whole history of the AAU. He called me in and he said, John, you can't do this! <laughs> I said, Harry, why not? He said, you're going to bring professionals 
into this organization. This is the Amateur Athletic Union. John, I will not support it. Well, he didn't support it, and he got a group of people to oppose it. So it was difficult. We were trying to get all these rules together and approved by the National AAU, and we had our conference at Lake Placid. And I knew there was gonna be trouble because there was especially one well-known Olympic coach that was really opposing this. And so I said, Ransom, if you're not there, it's not going to pass. So he got there. And yes, there was a question. As soon as the legislation was presented, this coach stood up and said, Dr. Arthur, you're going to have people dying at swimming meets. And I oh, no. And Ransom said, sir, you're right. People die at all kinds of locations. When they're walking down the street, when they're driving their car, when they're going to the bathroom, when they're having sexual relations. And people die at all times when the guy melted into a seat. And I knew then that it was going to work. So it did work, it passed, and it got going. And the first official AAU master swimming meet was held here at the Fort Lauderdale pool. The first national YMCA master swimming meet was held in 1956 in the Reading YMCA in Pennsylvania. And when I tried to get them to allow me to have this meet, they said, John, it won't work. These are older people, they're not interested. I said, just let me try. They said, John, it won't work. And so I talked to them, talked to them, and they said, well, you can try it, but it won't work. And it worked, and they've been having a National Masters Swimming Championship every year since 1976. There's some individuals that have played a major role in helping to get Masters Swimming moving. There are loads of people, hundreds and thousands of people, that have done so much to get it going, but I've listed a few on the agenda that maybe many of you have, the yellow paper. The first was Ransom Arthur, who came up with the idea of encouraging people to swim on a regular basis and be concerned about their physical fitness. Then there was a lady that I went to, and I talked to her about this program, and I said, I can't write the rules. I can give you lots of ideas. If you would just please put them together the official way, because without her, I would have been completely lost. And it is so thrilling for me to be able to see, say that that woman is here tonight. That woman is June Krauser. Yeah. I have never in my life met a person that was better organized than she was and what she would do. And Fort Lauderdale, as you know, had a lot of national master's meet. Well, they would come to her first and say, June, we'd like to get the master's meet. Would you be the meet director? And she always said yes, and they knew that she would. But if she would have said no, they would have forgotten about it because they knew that she could really run that meet. And this woman has done so much and this is why she was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame and is known as the mother of master swimming, June Krauser. <laughs> At the second national master's meet that we had, there was a person by the name of Bob Beach, Judge Bob Beach. And he got a copy of this from his local pool, got him excited. He came to the second meet. That was in 1971. He got so excited, he went back to St. Petersburg, and he started a meet there that is now the longest running master's meet ever held in the world. And he doesn't tell people this, but he financed the whole thing until it got to the point of breaking even and making money. But he's still swimming in that meet, and last week, he swam in a two and a half mile race in Tampa. 
and he swims all over the world. He is, I think, the number one promoter of master swimming. When I worked for Eunice Kennedy Shriver, she was always saying, John, we need success stories, success stories. And she'd say, John, did you get any new success? Bob Beach is the success story of master swimming. And it's just thrilling to have him here tonight. Then there's a person by the name of Carl House, who is an unbelievable person. Can you imagine how much time it would take to work on getting background information about people, writing articles about people, and doing 7,000 pages on a website? Carl House is the guy that did it, and he's here tonight. Dr. Paul Huntington. Dr. Paul Huttinger wrote many articles about the physiology of swimming. And this was one of the ways we helped to excite people about master swimming. Dr. Richard Ray was Ransom Arthur's assistant, and he's done lots of research on master swimming. Dr. James Councilman was the swimming coach at Indiana University. He hosted the first long course master's meet and also swam in it. Ted Hart, unbelievable guy at tabulating all the best times in the country. Buster Crabb, you probably know that he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and he didn't really want people to know about it because he was the first Tarzan, but he told me he didn't want people to talk about that. But he also had other jobs in movies and was very well known and swam in the first National Masters Law Course meet and was our PR director. Jack Kelly was a president of the AAU and he swam in the first AAU Masters meet that was held here in Fort Lauderdale. Hamilton and Mildred Anderson were master swimmers from Houston, Texas and they worked hard on the history. But we need to remember that there have been many, many people that have worked so hard over the years. I listed some people, but I couldn't list everybody that I'd like to because I didn't have enough space or time. So please remember that there are so many people that worked hard to start this program as a program to encourage older individuals to swim on a regular basis and be concerned about their physical fitness level. That's why it was designed. It's exciting. And now I'd like to ask Bob Beach to come up here, if he would. And he's going to be talking about memory lane. And he has some slides that are going to be shown. And as I mentioned, this was the first real publication, 2000, were printed. He lost his copy. But I'm going to give him this copy tonight. So Bob Beach, will you come up here? <laughs> thank you, John. I want to thank, thank the uh, International Swimming Hall of Fame for inviting me. And uh, I'd like to echo what John said about swimming crowd. As far as I'm concerned, there are three main people that created Master Swimming and made Master Swimming what it is today. Ransom Barker invented the idea and was very important behind it. John was extremely important in getting AU involved in it. But as John mentioned, June Crowley was the mother of master swimming. She had swim meets, she created Swim Master, which was a magazine a monthly about race results and stories about swimming, which all of us rushed to the mailbox to read. Uh, she was the rules chairman. Uh, she had a firm hand on uh, everything that she endeavored to control, which was a lot. <laughs> and she did a terrific job, and uh, I admire her and give her a great deal of credit for making Master Swimming what it is today. <laughs> She's a good friend. Um, I started swimming when I was 37, having given up a 20-year pack 
day smoking habit and uh, tried running in the beginning and within two weeks was in my doctor's office uh, complaining of my legs uh, having given out. So he suggested I swim. So fortunately we have a 50 meter pool in our neighborhood and I took up swimming and started uh, swimming laps. It took me about six months to get up to 1800 yards uh, without any lane ropes. Uh, lane swimmers were not accommodated in those days. And uh, I swam there for about three years and then my coach one day came to me and gave me this magazine that John talked about that he gave to me. And this magazine changed my whole life. I read it and um, uh, I, it was advocating uh, swimming uh, competitively for people over 40 for improving your cardiovascular system. Nancy Martha wrote the uh, article. Uh, I was impressed, so I wrote to him and said, I'm 40 years old, I swim a mile a day. Is that significant? He called me back, he said, yes, that's great, I want to come down and visit you. And he came down with Richard Ray and uh, two terrific guys, we had a lot of fun, and talked me into putting on a swim meet in St. Pete in 1971. I sent out a flyer to 500 rec departments, colleges, YMCAs, east of the Mississippi. I had the aquatic team parents help me put this meet on. Uh, we had no idea of anybody who was 25 or older that swam competitively. And in those days, we swam in 10 year age groups, 25 to 34 on up. The day of the meet, 17 people showed up. None of us knew each other. The meet was over before it started. <laughs> but we had a great time. And uh, then it was right after that that I went to Amarillo to swim in John's uh, second meet. And at that time, met John, and that was in 1971. And it's been since that day where we have been ex uh, very, very good, close, personal friends. And John, I really uh, love my uh, friendship with you. It's uh, been very, very uh, rewarding to me. So thank you, John. Um, and this book changed my life uh, entirely. I got very involved in master swimming. I was the first chairman, uh, vice chairman to uh, Ransom. I worked with John, uh, with uh, June very closely. Uh, we went to a uh, national AAU meet at the uh, uh, AAU house in uh, Indiana uh, for a big meeting whether or not they were gonna consider master swimming. They described us uh, as a, a bunch of old 50-year-old ex-athletes uh, who swam 50 yards on Sunday and then sat around and drank beer and talked about our former exploits. <laughs> that was the attitude that AAU had with master swimming. However, because of John, they did take us in. And from there, uh, we are what we are today. Uh, I think when we started with our first meeting uh, around John's pool, the second meet, we had 120 some odd swimmers. Uh, and at that time, Ransom set the philosophy of this program. One of the swimmers was an ex-Olympian, and she suggested that the program be closed to everybody except ex-champs, ex-Olympians, and uh, very high-ranking swimmers. At that time, Ransom, very irritated, explained to her that this was a program of inclusion, not exclusion. And it was open for everybody, and the primary purpose of the program was to get in good physical shape through swimming, and the carrot, and was the word he used, the carrot for the swimming was the competition. I did not see the competition as becoming the main purpose of the program. But now if you came to one of our national meets, you would be absolutely astounded at the quality of the competition. I just finished uh, swimming at the Greensboro, South North Carolina National Short Course meet. We had three male swimmers in three different age groups who swam a 19 plus 50. That would be absolutely shocking to Ransom if he heard that today. I've got some pictures from our beginning that I'd like to show for you. And if I can run this thing. 
Um, and this is, uh, I'll have to, well, yeah. Anyway, you can see in the beginning, it looks like somebody's smoking over there. <laughs>
this was this was in Sam. Uh, oh, it says Bloomington, and it was Bloomington. And there's Bumpy up there. Bumpy was always up at the top. He never got down from there. Uh, I always wanted to beat Bumpy, so I started swimming 10,000 yards a day. I was swimming three times a day, and I was getting faster, but I was wiped out. And I never could beat him. So. <laughs> Uh, this is again at Bloomington, um, with almost the same group, a couple added. That was a fellow named Eubanks, a great swimmer, who was a friend of Buster from Hawaii. And this is Bumpy. And here's a fellow that I hadn't run into for 40 years and, and that I ran into a couple weeks ago. This is Doc Councilman and me and Bumpy together. Uh, I'm very proud of that picture. Uh, this is uh, Ted Hart. Ted was interesting. His mother lived in St. Petersburg and wrote to him in Boston where he lived to tell him that I was putting on a swim meet uh, and, uh, for older guys. And so he was one of the first to come to the swim meet. And we've been friends ever since, and he's been the past president, uh, Grant Martin recipient. Um, this is uh, Richard Ray, and then, of course, Ransom at the other side. And these were party times. These really were great times. Now here I'm with two famous people, Ransom and Boston. I claim my 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> <laughs> this happened to be the right, it was that pamphlet that got me at the right place at the right time. Now this, we had just the uh, first law course meet. And this of course is me, and this is Doc Councilman. And when I first learned about competitive swimming, I got his book, The Science of Swimming. I read that book every day, like the Bible. He was the man of the world in swimming. And here I am, finishing a 1,500 meter, and I beat him. <laughs> of course, he was older than me, but I still beat him. <laughs> and he is asking me there about my workouts and how, what I do to be such a great swimmer. I told him, you got to be kidding. <laughs> I had no swim history whatsoever until I started swimming at 37. But he was a wonderful, wonderful man. He, um, he was at one time the oldest person to swim the English Channel. He swam the English Channel when he was 54. And I consulted with him later because uh, I tried the English Channel myself. But I didn't make it. But he was a wonderful guy. And this is a picture I'm very proud of. I had it blown up and it's in my uh, study. And there again. Uh, now, yeah, what a good looking bunch of guys. <laughs> this is Ted Hart's over, Ted Hart's over there. This is Gay Rosser. Yeah. Gay Rosser uh, was a wonderful guy. He graduated from the University of Miami. While he was there, uh, he had an opportunity to get on the Olympic team, the 52 uh, Helsinki Olympic team uh, on the relay. Yeah, he worked very hard to make the team. He made the relay. The story is as soon as the relay was over, he got a moped and took off for Europe with his girlfriends. <laughs> and all he wanted to do was to uh, get over there, to not to swim, but to see Europe with the girls. This is Bumpy, and this is Reed Ringel, who was very important to master swimming. Uh, he later became uh, the treasurer for Swimming Hall of Fame, and he was very, very active here. Uh, he's since passed away, and uh, Gay Rosser also passed away. Um, this, uh, of course, is me and um, Graham Johnson. And Graham Johnson swam with Bumpy in the uh, 52 Olympics, and they're both the same age, and they're very competitive, each other. Uh, one time, when he breaks a record, uh, Bumpy comes back and breaks it, and they, they go back and forth. He swam for South Africa, graduated from the University of Oklahoma, and now lives in uh, Texas, a U.S. citizen, and very active in swimming and holds many of the master's records. Uh, this is a picture that's used quite frequently. This is at the Swimming Hall of Fame at one of the meets. There's Jim, there's Ransom, um, and I think that's the girl from California. Ann Adams. Pardon? Ann Adams. Ann Adams, and she was very, very important to master swimming, particularly on the West Coast. Uh, this is Dan Malone and Jay, uh, Gay Rosser. Uh, Dan was one of the top swimmers in my age group. Uh, he uh, lived, is from Miami. His father was one of the pioneers in Miami Beach and uh, owned uh, the corners at Flagler and this game, I guess it was. Is that right, Ed? Sorry, did you? I'm not sure. Anyway. Uh, and this uh, 
is uh, Steve Clark at our first meet uh, in California, and uh, the first national meet we had, and uh, we had probably uh, 200 swimmers. That, that was really a fun meet. And this, of course, is the uh, Hall of Fame. There's Ted Marks and uh, June. And Ted is still with us. Uh, he's uh, not swimming as much, but he's uh, refereeing quite a bit. Dorothy Donnelly, she was very important to master swimmer <coughs> swimming, and she was our executive secretary for many, many years. And who is that? Pretty June crowd. Yeah. <laughs> you have changed a bit, June. <laughs> and this is the present headquarters for master swimming in Sarasota. Uh, this is a very interesting building, <laughs> and it's probably 40 years old, I guess, uh, and it's very distinctive. If you have the chance, you should go by and see Rob. I'd love to show you the place. This is the membership growth. Almost 60,000 people from 120 people sitting around in a pool in Amarillo, Texas. I think that's incredible. That's Master Swimming and how it started. It was a great program. For me, it was very significant. It changed my whole life. And without it, my life wouldn't be anywhere as fruitful and uh, exciting as it's been in meeting all the people that I've met over the years. And just the idea that a non-swimmer uh, could have been participating swimming against all these Olympic champs and, and great swimmers, it was, it was really exciting. Even though I may have been a judge for 45 years, I consider this one part of my life is more significant. Anyway, any questions you have about the past or any of these people? Okay, thank you very much.